Welcome to the Nerd Cave Discussions. I am one of your hosts, Zach Dykes, joined along with the new bearded Sultan, Trey Price. Trey, how you doing, buddy? I'm I'm like a bantha, man. I'm just, I'm geared up. I'm ready to go. I'm so excited about this episode. It's insane. Now, are you a bantha near Freetown? <laughs> One of those high banthas. <laughs> Ooh. Yeah, I, I, I. Uh, the spice must flow and the spice must flow guys this episode is brought to you by our wonderful patrons you can become part of the ship part of the exclusive crew by going over to patreon.com slash nerd cave nerd cave just like our wonderful crew members the first mate brandon hicks the helmsman the conductor our gunners richard newell daniel samford rushing water yoga marilyn james Brittany. The Granny B. Harrison and our deckhand, Martin Sager. If you don't have the extra bucks to toss our way, you can support us by going over to the Epic Game Store and using our Epic Creator code in any game purchase such as Fortnite, Rocket League, you're getting them little bitty cars. You'd be like, oh, man, I can get me one of them cars. I need some V-Bucks. Or if you want to buy some regular games, you want to get that Sifu game, you want to get God of War on your PC, you can do all of that there by using our Epic Creator Code NerdCave at checkout to support us with each and every purchase on the Epic Game Store. This is the Nerd Cave Discussions, where we discuss the latest and the greatest movies and TV shows that you need to know. You can watch us live over on twitch.tv slash Network, or you can watch the show later on youtube.com slash Network. Make sure to hit the follow and subscribe button so you don't miss out on anything and like it so more people will see the video. In this episode, we see a cowboy ride again. And just because you're quick doesn't mean you win. Mm. Mm. episode's yeah. name is in the name of honor in the name of honor that's it that's it all right trey that's it. <laughs> we're gonna set up the spoiler free review of the finale of book of boba fett season one hit him with it all right spoiler free if you have not watched the book of boba fett you have no more excuses Mm. The whole season is out now. You can binge watch it because you're a binge type of person. Go do it. Do yourself a favor. Do your family a favor and watch it. It'll make you a better person. Boba Fett is that good. Even when it's terrible, it's pretty good. So go watch it. It's still Star Wars. Even when it's bad, it's, it's still, still Star, Star Wars. Star Wars. That's right. Like Even the bad episodes still have like so many Easter eggs. It's like, okay, this is, this is all right. Yeah. Yeah. It's fine. It's fine. It's not great, but it's still a steak. <laughs> mm. One of those, uh, like five ribeyes for twenty dollars steaks, you know, like on the side yeah. of the road. It's like yeah, you, you, like you'll you'll eat it, and then later on you'll take it home and cut it up for a sandwich. Yeah, you know, it's like how good could like five ribeyes for twenty dollars be? Pretty good, turns out. You know, it's all right. All right. all right you know and then you watch like great. an episode two or an episode four of this thing and you're like man boba fett's pretty dope yep you know i'm not yep. including five and six in here I'm not, that is not boba fett that's the mandalorian yeah that that was that was mandalorian 2.5 season 2.5 yeah yeah a little precursor little precursor yep dan said he's gonna go ahead and cancel his disney plus subscription you can um but don't forget Obi-Wan is on his way. People. May 25th, baby. May, May 25th. 25th. I was hoping for May the 4th. You know what I mean? Yeah, that would have been, <clears throat> but you know. But I think it's because Moon Knight is still going on and they didn't want like competing shows. So yeah. It's like, yeah. It's like, could we, could we have just like moved Moon Knight like closer to Book of Boba instead of like having a month out? That's what I'm saying. Like, we you could have rolled on Moon Knight like next week. Yeah, yeah. Give you know, like, give me one week. You know, give me one week. Yeah. So I can get the graphics together, all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. But you know, and then I'm good. I'm good. But you know, no, we're gonna wait a month. Anyway, that's not what we're here to talk about. We're talking about in the name of honor, episode seven of the book of Boba Fett, guys. Oh man, this episode was. Like it, it brought everything together. It finally brought everything together. Yes. It was like herding cats for like yes. seven episodes of the show. It was like herding <laughs> cats. 
literally herding cats <laughs> yeah. on terrible scooters yeah yeah but this episode <laughs> they that... actually went faster they went fast yes it did they did they were they, they like realized like oh look at that i put it on high and then the golf <laughs> like they turned it from turtle to rabbit <laughs> yeah, just like whoa, whoa. <laughs> turtle to rabbit you you would have never known that uh it, it was something that you needed to have turtle to yeah. rabbit you know to rabbit but anyway mm -hmm. trey get, give me give me your thoughts on it we can go kind of play by play if we want to but i, I just kind of wanted this last episode to be kind of a discussion we don't we like if you watched it you watched it at this point guys you yeah you know you know you know and if you have not please please if you don't want spoilers like we're really seriously about to talk like a lot of spoilers so please jump out um or don't whatever um so yes i i with you like at the very beginning of the book of boba fett we were like uh, you're a boba fett doing stuff yes yes and then it was like okay um uh, yeah what what's happening what's happening and then it's almost like he's the ultimate move on any video game like you use it and then you have to let it like build back up over yeah the cool down <laughs> the cool down's gonna like, happen cool down was just going the whole time and then finally it just Boom, and he came back full freaking force. He was the Boba Fett we all remember. Yeah. That back the tank finally took hold <laughs> and went from there. <laughs> I agree one hundred percent. Amy says, I wish I could have seen we could have gotten the Boba we got this episode the rest of the season. Oh, season two is gonna be woo. Yeah, like this finally felt like Boba Fett, like you know what I mean? Like what we have read mm -hmm. and everything, but like the rest of it was kind of just like old man fett yeah it, yeah you know it's like is he gonna die at the end like yeah it, it's not your dad's boba fett it's just your dad it, you know and it, it's just i i'm excited to see where they go with it like how long do they go with boba fett you know do, are we going to get this two seasons to be done like, i don't necessarily want it dragged out and everything but um no you know it's just i'm i'm wondering where it is going to be you know I think I think it's going to piece together a lot of stuff. I think what happens so often with this is that you had your actor and you got him to come back for one season mm -hmm. of a show of his Star Wars character. We got the original Boba Fett guy and he's like, "Yeah, sure. I'll do it. I'll I'll do it for the fans." And then he can you can tell he really started liking being Boba Fett again. Yeah. And he was like, "Oh yeah. This is freaking awesome, you know." And he's like, <laughs> <laughs> and so now i think he's like i mean i'll do a season two if y'all want to like <laughs> like in yeah. the way they they end it and i know we're jumping to like the end the way they end it it's kind of like okay you could literally just end the show right there yeah it would be fine yes it's definitely its own unique little thing and if it ended i would be fine i would yeah. be perfectly fine with that yeah like if the book of boba fett closed here fine yeah yeah definitely um so like I said, we're not really going to like break down. I think just breaking down the moments that stood out to us, um, the conversation with Din and Boba, like when everything is like falling apart, was oh, such man, a that... a good moment where Boba's like, "Well, you could leave if you want to," and Din's like, "Nah, dog." He's like, I "Gave you my word." Yep. But then Boba's like, "But you probably really should leave." It's okay. In, in his own little way, like in their own little Mandalorian moment, he was like, I won't say anything if I survive. I'm probably going to die anyway. Who's going to know? Yeah. And but he was like, <laughs> nope, we die with honor. And I was like, and I loved it. It was like, so you be you believe in that bantha fodder? <laughs> yeah, he was like, he's like, this is the way. <laughs> he's like, well, that's good. <laughs> like, good thing that you do, because <laughs> yeah, he's like, because <laughs> I need to, hear, brother, <laughs> really badly. <laughs> and one thing that we get confirmed, like from the Pikes, and I, I caught it, you know, from you know episode four. I think it was when it happened. Yeah, yeah. I thought about, I'm like, oop, Zach freaking called it. That you know, the Pike Syndicate were the ones that killed the the tuscans and made it look like the biker gang and everything and i, I was like like cad bane like learning that i was oh like god yes i was like okay how is this going to affect moving forward and when he goes to like negotiate with boba he's like he's like all right 
you know, you can either, you know, accept these terms and everything or uh, don't, you know, and then we'll kill you. Yeah. And then it's like, oh, well, I don't. And he's like, oh, well, by the way, <laughs> yeah. by the way, they killed all the Tuscans, these guys. And the whole thing was so, so it was like the best Cad Bane's ever been because he's like talking to the Pike leader at the very beginning and he's like, he, he doesn't have those people in. He, he's like, he used to be a part of Tuscan Raiders. And the Pikes are like, no, nah, we killed them and blamed it on a speed swoop bike gang. And he's like, does Boba Fett know that? And he goes, no, we kept it very hidden. And he's like, I have an idea to draw. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. I know. He immediately turns it around. He's like, oh, by the way, they killed. <laughs> I know. It's just like, like the guy sitting in Moss Eyes. He's like, what? <laughs> Why did you tell him like, that? <laughs> but I thought oh, that was man. such a good moment right there where Cad Bane is trying to goad him into a one-on-one, -on -one, get this taken care of. That's very Cad Bane. Like he took down Jedi. Like he, he was always outsmarting everyone around yeah. him. And it, it it was really good. Like Amy said, use it like a knife to cut deep. Oh yeah, you he know? did. Like very much so. And in that moment, like it all like clicked into my head all at once. Like all of the Clone Wars came back in an instant. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh yeah, these guys just aren't like professional courtesy. They used to yeah. run together. Yeah. Like Cad Bane in his own weird little way helped raise Boba yeah. Fett. Yeah. You know, and now here he is. He's like, I will kill you. And he's like, you can try. And they almost did. Like when they almost got into it, I'm like, surely they're not going to do this right here, right now. Yeah, We're like yeah. five minutes in, Yeah, you know, <laughs> and they and they didn't because Fennec Shan was like, stop it. Quit being freaking stupid. Stop it. <laughs> She's like, <laughs> like, I need I need you to like calm down, man, because uh, if we do this right here, we're going to we're going to die. Like, we're yeah, there's there's three of us and about 30 of them out there. You need to chill. Yeah, it's like we good shots, but uh, I ain't in best car, Boba. <laughs> yeah, come on now. <laughs> but it was just it was like that Western like Mandalorian and like a few episodes of Boba have really really done well with like the western kind of theme since they brought yeah. in cad bane and everything like i yeah. i really really loved that moment it was just that standoff and Bob was like well i'm not gonna be dumb you know yeah but i i also love that cad bane was like oh if you're waiting for a free town as i killed the marshal and it was like yeah but was like oh what? <laughs> what? <laughs> it's like, oh, um, okay. <laughs> yeah. Tears mm. flowing down down his face like in his mask. Oh. Um, yeah. Yeah. But I, I love that uh. moment and everything. Um the the next thing that was interesting, I was I knew that it was gonna happen, but it was the other other crime bosses turning on oh yeah, Boba's people. Yeah, no brainer. I like because when they had that sit down several episodes ago, I was like, they all agreed to that a little too quickly. Yeah. yeah. Like, I know the Rancor was a good move and it's like, I'll feed you to this Rancor. But they were all like, oh, yeah, sure, whatever. And I'm like, these are crime bosses and they ain't interested in cleaning up uh, Mos Espa. No. Or Tatooine or any of that. They're like, uh, the spice will flow and we're going to get freaking rich. Yeah. And yeah. Yes. Yeah, so, so when they all start turning and it's a very Godfather moment where everyone's like, oh, crap, we're all surrounded. And like the Trandoshans jump uh, Chrysanthemum, which let's just give props to that freaking. Wookie. I know, man. I know. <laughs> oh, my God. I ain't never seen anyone take a beating like that in Star Wars. Yeah. Ever. No, no. <laughs> it was insane. And of course, the Gamorreans get jumped by the um, the I don't even the remember what they're dog called. People. I, the yeah well whoever they are and they straight up get pushed off that dude cliff. that was and so like, sad i was like oh my god like, like if anyone was gonna make it through this as like a third banana that no one cared about but really cared about i thought the gamorians yeah. were gonna make it but nope they just <laughs> it, it was like the 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 pigs that uh jesus like cast the yeah the legion yeah. <laughs> <Just> drown themselves <laughs> 
Amy was like, why do they have to squeal as they fall? I was like, <laughs> I was like, that's just part of it. <laughs> oh. oh, God. Well, and to Dan's point here, I feel like he might have enjoyed himself ripping apart some Trandoshans. Like when they put Black Chrysanthemum in the Trandoshan part, I was like, that's yeah. not very smart. Because like he just like yeah. a few episodes ago just ripped one's arm off for no reason. Yeah, I thought that too. I was like, is this a smart move? <laughs> is this a smart move? Because <laughs> he was even eyeball him. He's like, I will kill. He's like, I will. <laughs> He's like, I want to just taste blood. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and, and, they, and it takes like 15 to 20 of those Trandoshans to take him down. Yeah. Like just piling on top of him just to pin him down. Yeah. It was insane. I'm, man. I'm curious how he got out of that situation. Did Finnick come and save him and then go to the mods? Like, yeah. Like, you know, we didn't get to see that and everything. But again, Black Chrysanthemum is a, a, a beast. beast of a wook. Yeah, like you, you know, like we love Chewbacca. Yes, Black, but he don't hold a candle. Like Black Chrysanthemum is like on a whole another level of like fighter. Like he, he's he's crazy. <laughs> yeah, and he said GG for the Wookies. Yes, yes, GG, GG's in the chat because like oh my gosh, like if there was such a thing as a dire Wookie, th that's what Chrysanthemum yeah, is. Yeah, like, one hundred percent. He, he, He's a, a dire Wookiee that got um like anthropy. Like, yeah. He is just another freaking level, yeah. man. Ugh. It's so good. And you know, we we get all these like little scenes. I don't want to have to like, you know, break down everything. Do each one, yeah, yeah. But the moment where Freetown shows up. Yeah. And it's like, oh, the Calvary's here. You know, they they kind of clean out all the pikes and everything. And it's like, oh, everything's good. Everything's good. You know, it's all good. And then Mando's like, that was too easy. And then turns on the heat. And then yeah. you see this thing just walking. And you're like, yeah. this looks like one of those cannons from like the Clone Wars. And I'm like, okay, well, they're about yeah, to this just, looks... just about and to you're get like, ripped. But it's so much bigger. And it's so much worse. <laughs> Yeah, yes, giant droidicas whatever sit dan <laughs> yes that's exactly what they were giant droidicas and i was like what and i <laughs> love like i was like why don't they just walk through the barrier because you could do that with the droidicas you could get through their you know yeah. shields and then like black chrysanthemum tries to do it and then the legs like yeet <laughs> just like yeah, just bite him. <laughs> knocks him out and i'm like okay well they at least like realize that as a weakness and you know work against it and everything yeah and they even addressed it like because they knew they knew the fandom was going to be like why the heck don't they just run up there and rip out its processor and they were like this is why <laughs> yeah yeah this is this is a this is a droidy cut 2.0 yeah and you know it was it was well handled and shown it wasn't just like oh well those technical specs <laughs> yeah you know because yeah. like a lot of sci-fi deals with that kind of stuff in a really poor way um i agree amy says was not expecting the giant droids 100 percent. it was it it was a new new thing it was enjoyable i mm -hmm. thought it was great yeah to be like because oh, you gotta think like if it really just comes down to a shootout yeah boba and his people are outnumbered but they outskill the pikes yeah. 10 to 1 yeah between two mandalorians a master assassin a wookie who refuses to die out of spite <laughs> just out of hate <laughs> <laughs> yes <laughs> he's just i just will not you can't make me and you know, and then even their little foot soldiers, I'm like, they've got you out gunned yeah. hand over fist. But then the droids show up and you're like, ah, yep, they, yep, yep. The pikes have money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Ooh. <laughs> and money buys a lot of things. <laughs> money. <laughs> Hooked on phonics. We'll get to to that here in just a minute. I didn't want to jump to 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 Cad Bane's uh final fight and everything, but um because that that deserves a whole whole section in and yes. of itself uh for our discussion yeah now going to another scene we're back in moss isley we see an x-wing fly in and i'm like that's luke that's luke's x-wing because you can see like r2 and all of that and i'm like okay. it's obviously I, it's like okay well this is interesting i was like i guess you know luke's bringing 
baby Yoda back, you know. But then we see that it's just R2 piloting just R2. the X-Wing and everything. And, you know, baby Grogu's in there, or baby Gro- Grogu's in there and everything. And it's like, wow, that wrapped up real fast. <laughs> yeah. You know, wrapped up real fast with uh, old Luke and everything. And you see that he's got on the, the chain mail and everything. Yep. Which I think lends to my theory of this is going to be pivotal 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 for luke yeah you know when because you could tell luke was not expecting him to pick mandalorian he was expecting him to pick jedi but then grogu was like nah we are a tribe yeah this is what we do yeah because like he he, this is this is the way yeah he already sees the power of attachments and that they're not a negative thing and I, I'm wondering, like, I, I know Ali pointed out, I think last week, uh, because of the, the training episode and everything, like we've seen posters of Grogu building like a lightsaber and all of that. Um, mm-hmm. I'm wondering, does Luke come back into the picture next season and be like, hey, I I, I, I messed up, you know, I was I was wrong. Yeah, I was <laughs> wrong, you know, and which I would love to see, you know, some humility because Luke loving to death but luke has always been a more prideful he's very skywalker uh yes. in a lot of things yeah he you know he's not killing younglings uh except you know almost killed a youngling <laughs> his nephew <laughs> but <laughs> you know i i'm i'm wondering where they're going to go with that whole thing um but we get one of the coolest scenes here in just a minute i thought it was hilarious uh but we see boba and mando like fighting these huge droidicas and everything and like them flying oh my god that was hilarious absolutely yes, hilarious. that was great that was great and sending out the the twi'lek guy to <laughs> to like bargain and everything oh man didn't even look at the data pad just grabbed and he's like i've got this da, 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 da. and i knew at the moment i'm like he hasn't even looked at that yeah, pad. No. That pad's going to be like a, a snarky little line, and it's going to just spark the whole thing. And then they come in like freaking Mandalorians out of the sky. Yep. I was like, yes, freaking my backpack has jets. <laughs> <laughs> Boba. The Boba. Fat, the fat. Exactly. <laughs> we finally have a realization of this song. Yeah, and <laughs> like it, it reminded me of season one when the um, – the Mandalorians like come out of nowhere and fight all the bounty hunters and everything. Like it, it was really, really cool seeing both Din and Boba and that kind yeah. of like that thing. Yeah. Cause I mean, they, they did a good job of in Mando. Cause after Din Djarin sees those, he's like, I got to get me one of those. Yeah. Like, <laughs> like you can tell the Mandalorians, like they like their jet packs. Hey. They're like, Oh yeah, <laughs> this is the way. <laughs> this is the way. But that man, can we just camp out on that fight scene when it's yeah. just the two Mandalorians and they're doing stuff and you see like, I don't know what it was, but it felt, this is why I'm like, that's my Boba Fett. That's what I freaking remember. Like he shoots and doesn't miss yeah. and he's doing all stuff. And like that one bit where he like shoots this way, but pulls up a knee and shoots that arrow. I'm like, that's straight out of the bounty hunter yeah. game, man. Like I was like, that's gorgeous. Yeah. That is absolutely gorgeous. And I'm like, this is what I remember. Yeah. It was so well done. So well done. And, you know, just seeing them like taking hit after hit. And even when Din goes down, like Boba is just like, pop, 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 you know, just like, he, yeah, he's got his, his dead eye <laughs> on and ready to go. And there was one dude, like both him and Din just kept shooting after he was dead. <laughs> as he was he's falling. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I was like, there we go. <laughs> They're like, we hate all of you, but screw that guy specifically. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's like, you're a jerk. You're a jerk. <laughs> You're a jerk. <laughs> um, Amy says, I love the bargaining part. You knew what was going to happen, but seeing it happen, it was hilarious. And the actor that, that plays that character, he's a very good comedic actor and everything, but it was like, you finally got some sort of come up. It's to him. He's always been snarky yeah. and everything. It's like, he, <laughs> Boba put him in this position where it's just like, <laughs> I was like, he's going to get shot. <laughs> and the pikes are like, read it <laughs> like they know yeah. but he's like he's just got his pad and he's like 
<laughs> and then he says it. And he's just so despondent. <laughs> Maybe we could talk about your your uh <laughs> what, what, what do you what are your concessions? <laughs> it's like read it. It's like <laughs> this is not me, not me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And he's like <sighs> But God, that was so great. We get the droids, and it was such a interesting like it was like the monster like coming after you the whole time through the rest of the episode, uh, for most majority of the rest of the episode. Um, what what did you think about like that whole like scene? Because we had like Din him like taking on one, and then we had the rest of the fighters taking on the other. I thought it was really good. Like, kudos to Dindajarn, like, doing what we've kind of started to know him as. He, if anything, he's got the luck feet, you know? Yeah. Like, he, he, he he's, a, he's a solo. Him, he's, he's a Han solo. Yes. Yes. And he can just bust up in there and he's like, I've got plot armor. Come at me, you know? <laughs> and he's trying and trying, but he's still getting smacked around like no one's business, you know? Like that thing almost crushes him two or three times, throws him through some walls. And then Amy Sedeckis shows up and goes, man, no. <laughs> and then he's like, oh, God. <laughs> and that was like my favorite part is like the the rickshaw like moment and everything <laughs> and she's just in it and i'm like wow we're really gonna put her in this yep we are let's go <laughs> it was like we know this is the last episode of the season everybody's showing up yeah, exactly. like, this is this we going out on a big one on this one because <laughs> which is so um out of place for these shows especially a mandalorian show where sometimes you'll have a hour and a half long episode with one maybe two people in it yeah yeah you know just from the sheer numbers of casting in this one and so you know mando takes care of his and all of that and then the the best the absolute best thing ever occurs because uh boba fett like takes off and he's like i'll be back and you're like god i hope so <laughs> yeah i'm like oh he's and gonna then, go get the slave one that's what i was thinking i thought that would have been great but then you know dave filoni knows we want to make good on our promises mm. and they did yeah they they did you hear this mighty roar and it's just like look to the west on the third day like, <laughs> <laughs> and sure enough that claw comes around and you just know he's freaking riding that run core baby and like it was and so he, godzilla like kaiju film like it was done yes. so well like yes. like homages to all of those kind of movies and everything i'm like you hear it before you see it yeah oh. <laughs> like i that's one of the things that i love about Favro and Filoni like they are a they are students of not just Star Wars but other cinema like they're cinephiles yeah. essentially and like I just love that like they have the western they've had like the you know the the more like Japanese kind of stuff with like Jedi and all of that but then you yeah. you have like you have a kaiju like fight essentially in Star Wars. Like we've never yes. had that in Star yes. Wars. <laughs> it was so great. And to see Boba Fett riding that thing with the chains, I'm like, man. Like a bantha. <laughs> like a bantha, man. <laughs> and it's so good. Because it's everything you want. Yeah. You're like, this is the this is the nerdy. This is the nerdy thing that we want. This is all the fan fiction we read growing up. This is all that nonsense that we hope we could yeah. do as our characters, our OCs. And here's Boba Fett riding a rancor like the mob boss he is okay <laughs> dan oh, says you so want good. respect get yourself a rancor get yourself a rancor that's right and <laughs> that's right like as soon as they mentioned it danny trejo was like you know the witches of danthamir yeah. rode rode these mighty beasts it's like you're not gonna just mention that and not you know do and it then not, yeah even when you don't bring danny trejo back for another cameo i mean yeah. it's like come on man his whole point was to set this thing up yeah you guys knew you yeah knew. <laughs> and like the the whole battle here was just so cool like the rancor just beating it up then din coming in with the the dark saber to you know kind of weaken it even more you know get the shield down yeah. and everything and attack it like it it was so well done <laughs> the witches rode these things for miles <laughs> like uh <laughs> like spongebob <laughs> yeah <laughs> and then like 
the the moment that was so cool was like the the first one that they they fought like but was like do it and then it's just like just rips it apart and i'm like yes it was was very satisfying (laughs) it was very satisfying because they you know those droids they didn't throw just one at them they threw three at them Mm. so it was like we're done send in the droids yeah (laughs) like but man oh it was crazy that, that rancor man and i love it like i have a special place in my heart for rancors maybe it's because as a kid and to this day return of the jedi is my absolute favorite star wars and i know you disagree i know i see your old man face calm down <laughs> um to me it was great because it was i always loved about star wars where you could get these characters that weren't just humans yeah yeah you know like it was different and it showed jabba the hut and all these weird characters and then jabba who is a big imposing monster flexes on everybody and says oh i have a bigger imposing monster yeah. that i will feed you to yeah and so the idea of the rancor has always been great it's been a it's pretty much like a just a star wars symbol like if you had to talk about it you talk about jedi you, well you think about lightsaber now and you would think about a rancor and now you probably think about a mandalorian helmet but you know it's just one of those things and to have him fully realized as just this wonderful wonderful nerdy moment was just like it was the best like if it had ended right after that i would have been fine but it doesn't it gets even freaking better yeah yeah it definitely does and of course we you know we get like the grogu moments through some of these things and everything um but we see the 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 mods and the freetown people finding the the last droid uh and the rest of the pikes that are left and everything and it's not looking good and they're like oh we're gonna go snipe the thing up top because that's gonna make a difference yeah it's like that's gonna help yeah that's not that's not gonna help at all um (laughs) that's why you're foot soldiers yeah yeah you are (laughs) you are cannon fodder that's what that is yes um and we we see all of that taking place juxtaposed to Boba Fett, you know, did all of that cool stuff and Cad Bane shows up and is like, oh crap. Okay, now we've got like the Rancor is like the Rancor is just gonna kill Cad Bane. It's gonna eat him up and everything. And then Cad Bane's like and just like start and then it's like the Rancor's like, oh my God, this is fire. I don't know what this is. Like I, I don't like this. And he just lion tamers that thing down. He's just like, back up. I will yeah. set you up fire you know like, <laughs> set a fire down in my soul, in my soul. <laughs> and boba falls off and everything and the rancor like she tries to you know do all of its stuff but it gets tamed like you were saying and just runs off it's like i'm i'm done playing i like i'm done <laughs> i ain't dealing with that this anymore. Is scary. <laughs> <laughs> this scene though was one of the most interesting i think out of the whole like the whole last episode because like we you know we had the first encounter like cad bane was right now trying to get him to you know go into a fight but we knew that this was going to be the fight and even brings up like the past like he brings up you know you're not as young as you used to be and boba's like well you're old you're older than me you know i'm about to say you were old when i was a boy yeah it's like (laughs) but you know cad's like you know i'm still faster than you and it's like but i got my armor it, it, yeah. it, it was very much a i'll still put you in your place i may be your dad but i can still lick you <laughs> yeah yeah exactly might be your dad but i'll still put you through that wall son <laughs> yeah oh and then it, that's that wonderful tense moment and you know talking about the western stuff that that moment right before the guns get drawn you're just like yeah like you can just feel it you're like oh how is this gonna go because it could literally go either way yeah and we get the action and everything i'm not gonna break down all the action but yeah. uh boba loses you know he gets knocked down and everything but when he showed up he had his gaffy stick and i was like that's gonna come into play like they wouldn't put the yeah. gaffy stick on him unless it was gonna come into play like you know just Maybe. plot because he hasn't been walking around with it. exactly so, you know, it's been like a special thing. Yeah. So I was like, mm, okay. So we get the moment where it's like, you know, 
I, I've taught you all that I can, but uh, I'm going to teach you one last lesson. And he takes off the helmet and everything. And like Boba even like starts like closing his eyes. Like he's like, like it's going to happen. Like he's accepting it. And then bang, like he just boom <laughs> knocks him over and then takes the gaffy stick and goes off on him. Like literally when that happened, um, I was finishing watching it with Emily and I'm sitting there watching it. And when he does that and pulls it and he starts overpowering mm -hmm. Cad Bane, I'm literally like this at the thing. And I'm like, how's it going to go? How's it going to go? What's going to happen? Is this the end of? I was, I was not like, expecting them to kill Cad. I was shocked. I'm like, I was yeah. like, no freaking way. Yeah. 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 I was the same way. I it was like, blew me away. I was like, holy crap and emily you know emily she's processing with me and she, i'm just like we just saw the death of one of the most important star wars characters yes yeah. <laughs> like i mean this is up there with like if boba fett had died y'all yeah, yeah. like if boba had lost and he died i would have been just as shook yeah because i'm like if 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 he's gonna beat cad bane i'm like cad bane's gonna slink away last minute and now i'll get you next time yeah you know he's he's like, done that so many times where he's so many times somehow just like you know gets away and everything and dude when it was just like he's not moving he's not talking he's not he's just there like i was like yeah think he's really dead yeah i i was stunned i really was stunned i was not expecting them to pull that card you know but cad was going to kill him you know what i mean like and bo was like okay i'm not gonna i'm not gonna you know hold back anything and it was just man it, it was who it was a big moment it was definitely a big moment nate says i think cad is still alive i mean possibly but and then amy chimes in bane dying cad bane dying def definitely was a shocker i thought he'd slip away yeah like that's what we've seen in like clone wars and even bad batch we've seen that over and over and over where cad bane just makes it happen and he gets away uh nate also puts in they zoomed in over him and his chest was beeping maybe that got the episode maybe that was like his uh, support system maybe it still was going i don't know yeah i don't know like and because you also gotta think about it they love doing major character death live action in star wars oh yeah yeah they love it they will they will give you filler and backstory animated and in the novels and comics to as long as the day is but when someone dies live action it tends to be permanent yeah yeah i agree <laughs> look tom Fonick says he gets shot in the head but can't take a knife into the chest <laughs> hey you know he's got he's got a chrome dome he's, he's he got he's got to take care of there <laughs> oh yeah and plus it all it all de depends on his anatomy mm -hmm. uh, you know i mean that seems like a super nerdy thing to pull on everyone but i mean alien anatomy is way different like true true I mean that that's why like the Wookiees are super tough because they've got like super thick hide and it's been suggested that their hearts aren't right here that they're a little bit lower and all that different kind of stuff. Yeah. And the you know the more alien you are, the weirder it can be. So mm. Amy says uh, Zach didn't react as much as I thought he would. I think he was in shock. Yeah, I definitely was. Oh, I was just I like was in shock. I was just like, oh my god, like that was huge. That was absolutely yes. huge. Now I was because that's the end of an era. I will say this, okay? I know we've been getting a ton of Mandalorian. I would love to have a Cad Bane show. Oh heck yeah, man! That I'd would be that. so fun. I really want it to be even grittier though. Oh yeah, like I want it. I want like, it be like if yeah, almost like you can't watch this until you're older kind like, of stuff. Uh, no Country for Old Men kind of yes exactly yeah. very gritty very western yeah very i mean it's cad bane yeah. it's cad bane he is the boba fett before there was boba fett yeah yeah <laughs> i mean come on because like when they introduce cad bane in the clone wars i'm like this guy like see i don't know like i wasn't sold on him but like the more he like i was like why is this dude like able to do all of these things ever every every time 
like you know beat the jedi you know like literally got in the jedi temple and stole a holocron like all of these right. things you know was able to take down like and get zero the hut out of like the middle of coruscant like all of these crazy things it's just like you know and that was just animated and, and you know it yeah i would love yeah. it i would love it yeah, he definitely had to earn his chops as a Star Wars character, but once you saw him do all of these crazy things over and mm -hmm. over and over, and he was so cutthroat the whole time, like, he lived and died by not even the Bounty Hunter code, because he's like, screw that, I have my own code. Yeah. And he just does it. He doesn't care about you, he doesn't care about anybody else. He cares about him, yep. and that is it. Yep. Like, when he had a crew, when he was first introduced, he had a crew. And then they started like dying off, and he's like, "I don't care. Yeah. I don't care about you. <laughs> you mean nothing yeah. to me. <laughs> it's all about the job and the pay. <laughs> exactly. All the job and the pay." Um, Hooked on Phonics says, "You can't hate Cad Snarl. No, like the the snarl is like so iconic, so iconic." And then uh, Travis chimes in. He says. Bane's voice might be my favorite thing about the show. His voice reaches deep inside you and just shakes you. It's like, hide your kids, hide your wives, because here comes Cad yeah. Bane. Here comes Cad Bane. Because he never has to be loud. No. He never has to yell. Yeah. And to Nate's point, he gave Jedi a run for their money when he fought them. Like, I remember the fight between Cad Bane, Obi-Wan, and... Um, Long hair Jedi, uh, uh, the one that liked Asajj. Yes, yes. Uh, oh uh, man, what is his name? Oh, uh, I just read it today. Keep going. I'm gonna look it up because screw that. I can't remember. I can't remember. But like, gave both of them like a master Jedi and like a covert op Jedi like a run for their money. Um, it was like that now how to run with them. Um, Quinlan Voss. Quinlan Voss. There we go. I was filling a V in there, but yeah. Yeah. Hey, Alice. Yeah. Hey, Al. Welcome to the stream. We're just talking about the book of Boba Fett. Hope you're doing well today. And yeah. Dan says, I think Cad's transition to live action was very good. I think so as well. Like, I know a lot of people are like, ah, oh, it doesn't look like him. This is what it looks like and all of this. And it's like, okay, if we really want to point that out, Look at Dooku from the movie and look at Dooku in Clone Wars. Like, for real, dude's people. face was like way weird. different. Weird. Like, it took a while to get used to, but then it was like, okay, that's what look, Dooku looks like and everything. And let's be honest, even Obi Wan and Anakin going into Clone Wars, when I first saw it, I was like, ugh. Yeah. Ugh. Yeah. <laughs> like, the whole it was like, thing. No. It was like, mm, I don't, I don't know about this. Yes, it's like uh, I really don't, I really, really don't know about this. Yeah, so much so that I didn't watch it for a while just because I was like, I can't get over it. I yeah. just can't because we went live action to cartoon for a long time, and I was like, I don't want, I don't want a Star Wars cartoon. What is this? Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and Nate, Nate says uh, he aged, yeah, and I think that might be, you know, like his blue was a lot darker in the in the show, like the cartoon and everything. But you know, the age thing kind of makes more sense to me that like he would, you know, lighten up after time, but not really lighten yeah, I mean, up. He was still mean as a snake, very mean, very mean. But yeah, I mean, you fade in your old age. You get white hairs and you get light blue skin. Like it just happens. Yeah, your eyes don't I mean, glow as much. You know, and he says yeah, it was a good good realistic interpretation of him like that moment that whole that whole scene was so pivotal pivotal like it, it just huge and i i loved every minute of it. i loved every minute of it um yeah going back to the last kind of part of the battle uh taking out the last one and uh, the last droid and everything like we see the rancor come in and do its thing it's fighting and you know tears everything up and like it was still satisfying and what was awesome as well is like the rancor actually learned like you could see it learning on the fly and adjusting to fight this thing it's not just like this mindless beast i thought that was really cool oh yeah like he's just doing it because you gotta think about it this thing is trained to listen to Boba Fett. Mm -hmm. And Boba Fett was not around. Yeah. 
So, I mean, that's that's pretty much what it was. And they and a few people tried to get it to calm down, I think. And it was just like, you're not my dad. Yeah. Like, you're not he's my just dad. Sort of like, yeah, just screw you. I'm going to do what I want. But then, of course, Grogu comes in and, and does Jedi stuff. So, yeah, which there was a point that um, it was den trying to fight off the last one or whatever and he gets like knocked out and then grogu comes up and like i agree with dan i thought grogu was going to like pull the dark saber and grab the dark saber and just like do something awesome that that would have been dope that's what i was thought thought was about to happen and then like he pulls that apart from the leg which was still cool it was still really cool but i was like yeah are we about to get to see like but it wouldn't have made sense for the story like he wouldn't have been trained no. for the lightsaber yeah he can flip around but he has not been trained as much as i would have loved it as much as i would have loved that moment but i was like you know when it didn't happen i'm like well that's not really like that doesn't really make sense you know storytelling wise like they would have jumped the shark then um oh yeah but the rancor taming like i thought they did a really good job amy pointed this out where they made Grogu look like he was not as much of a baby anymore. He was not like this yeah. naive kid. Like there was more wisdom there. And like as he's taming the Rancor, you see that in his eyes. There's more. It's not just like uh, and then passing yeah. out. There, yeah. There was more confidence in what he was doing. I love that. I thought they did awesome. With oh, it. yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And it, it took me right back to when he faced down the Mudhorn that one time, mm -hmm. you know, where we were all like, oh, holy crap, he is force sensitive. But like you said, he didn't immediately pass out like he got the thing that he did. The, he did the whole and he got the Rancor to calm down and take a nap. And then he was like, freaking A, man. <laughs> and then he and then he walked over there and took a nap because yeah. he was tired. <laughs> yeah. And I love I love that. And. I also thought it was really cool that, like, it was almost an om om homage to that's the word to Anakin, you know, because he had that ability to tame wild beasts. Like thinking about Episode Two, like he was able to do all of that and everything. So I thought that was really, really interesting to see that brought back into what Grogu could do and everything. Yeah, yeah, it, it pulled it all in very nicely. It's almost like we got the ending we kind of wanted at the end of season two of Mandalorian, you know, mm -hmm. because it, it almost feels like they were like, we're going to set up this next season. And then in between, they were like, actually, we're going to take the season in a new direction, but we've set it up to be something different. How can we change it before getting into the next season? In come Book of Boba Fett. Yeah. So um, I think it's really good. And then, of course, at the end, you get Din Djarin and Grogu in the new ship. The the <laughs> Yeah, ah, just beating on the thing. Gong, 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 gong. You know, we get that levity. We get the, the dynamic we remember. And he, like, flips it into his sub subsonic speed thingy. Mm -hmm. And they go off into space. And then, boom, it's over. Close the Book of Boba Fett. Done. Oh, well, we get that last scene with you know the whole uh well it's yes, there is the post credit scene you know boba well we get that but we get boba walking down the street with Phoenix shan everybody yeah. actually having reverence and respect for him you know doing the thing and he's like why do they have to do it with the right arm and everything yeah because he's like oh oh <laughs> yeah i love that they brought the Melru runs in as well like the the yeah, fruit and everything cool. but then seeing the mod seeing black chrysanthemum and all of that right there and then it wraps up we get the post credit scene uh and we see the back to tank and i was like i was like that's cad bane in there like that's what i thought that's, too. i was like that's cad bane in there and i was like that's I was weird like, why did he scoop him up why did he do that you know but then you see that it is actually the marshal yeah. from Freetown. And you're like, oh. And then the guy that's there turns around and it's the modifier guy yep. that helped save um, Fennec. Fennec Shan. And I'm like, oh, so he's really good at his job. Mm -hmm. What is this going to mean for the marshal? 
maybe I hope it doesn't do I hope it doesn't do a free town spinoff. I'm like, I don't have time for a free town no, spinoff. No. I don't have time for this. <laughs> no, like there's not enough going on. Like if Bo was cleaning up Tatooine, there's not enough go on for, for that, you know. Um no. But no. but I love, you know, that that kind of like, okay, Cad Vanth is gonna still be here, all this kind of stuff. What a Cobb Vanth, they were not Cad Vanth. Cobb Vanth is still gonna he's still around and everything. He just got shot in the shoulder, you know. I I you know, I, I'm just I'm I'm wondering where this could go from here. What are they going to do from here uh, with all yeah. of this? Um, but yeah. yeah, the last episode, very, very good. Um, I, I, you know, there were, there were not moments where I was like, I wish this was happening. Yeah. I don't feel like I got jipped out of anything. Um, I got all the stuff that I wanted. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, and then it left me with questions, which I think is great storytelling when you're like, wait, what does this mean for that character mm -hmm. or Tatooine? You know, is this the beginning of a turnaround for Tatooine, the armpit of the galaxy, yeah. <laughs> to be actually be like a slightly progressive trade hub? Maybe. You know, Maybe. like, you know, does, and all those different kinds of things. Does Boba Fett, since, you know, the people turned on him, does he just take over the whole city? and like phase them out completely um yeah does he move to take over moss eisley as well yeah you know because that would be easy let's yeah, be honest yeah it's <laughs> it's not the same as you know moss espa and everything so th yeah. there's a lot a lot of things that could happen if they did a season two um you know does it go past tatooine uh you know do we now deal with the huts where the huts think that they Oh, they're weak now. We'll come in. You know, do we get that storyline picked up and everything? Um, yeah. Because I feel like the huts were just like, ah, we're just going to wait and see who wins this and then go from there. So I, I'm, I'm, I'm wondering where they're going to go with that. Uh, Amy chimes in Marshall with a giant gun arm would be awesome, but I will pose this question, uh, this statement that would just be that episode of Doctor Who where it had the the guy from the future that had like the gun arm and he was like a Western and all. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, I, I remember it. Yeah, I remember it because I remember watching the episode going, what? <laughs> what are we do? What are, what are we doing? I'm confused. This is a sci-fi show, right? <laughs> it was still a good good episode, but it was definitely yeah, it was weird. Still good, but it was like it just felt out of place. Yeah, <laughs> but you know. The doctor can wear Stetsons. Stetsons are cool. He, he can do whatever he wants. Do whatever he wants. He's older than all of us. Yep. <laughs> yep. Uh, yep. Nate says, couldn't Ezra communicate with creatures? Yeah, he could. Uh, he could yeah. communicate with like the, the wolves and all of that uh, from Loath, Loath Cat and all that, all that stuff. Yeah, which was good to see thinking about that because, you know, that's one of those old school Jedi powers where you can like force calm a creature, mm -hmm. you know, and like just get it to like not murder you. Yeah, hey, it's all, <laughs> you, always you, helpful. <laughs> you can't really yeah, you can't really control it. You're just sort of like, and calm down. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, <laughs> unlike a Sith would just crush its will like Darth Bane. Uh, did yeah, <laughs> just be like, bow. You know, there's a difference. Like, I remember reading the first Darth Bane book and when he is on the uh, star forge and literally just crushes a rancor's will. And then just rides it to the temple. And I'm like, that's my dude. That's <laughs> my dude. <laughs> Sith used to be real dark Lords. <laughs> hey, you know, back in my day, <laughs> back in my day. All right, guys. Well, there is the book of Boba Fett season one wrapped up in a pretty little rancor bow. Might be a little bit saliva on there, but it's there, guys. We hope that you enjoyed it. Make sure to hit that like button. Hit the subscribe button. Let us know what you thought about the discussion that we've been having. And uh, what would you like to see in the new season of Book of Boba Fett, guys? Uh, we'll be going on a hiatus for this show uh, for the next few weeks uh, as we get ready for Moon Knight. But keep tuned. We've definitely got more and more awesome Star Wars content that's going to be coming out. Me and Trey are going to be getting nerdy. 
Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. All that good stuff, guys. So definitely check it out. Make sure to follow us over on Twitch so you don't miss out on anything. And go check out Trey over at Bearded Book Club, guys, because Bearded Book Club is cool. You know, yeah. Reading Books is fun. Are cool. Yeah. Don't be a dummy. Read a book. That's right. <laughs> That's your new sl- <laughs> slogan. That's my new, that's my new line. Don't be a dummy. Read a book. <laughs> All right, guys. Try to there with, hey, dummy, give me your money. <laughs> I, I do. I, hey, you know, if if people don't mind being called a dummy, <laughs> like I can make up slogans pretty good. <laughs> so, hey, dummy. <laughs> 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 guys we hope that you enjoyed it this has been zach and trey y'all have a blessed week bye